Okay, so I'm going to, in this video, just very quickly show you how to um, change the the brightness or, or the, the properties of of an image once you're in, in anime. Uh, this image here, this background, is sort of darkened so that when the images come in in the foreground, um, they kind of pop. So the background doesn't compete with the foreground. And, and we'll add some sound as well. You can hear a little banjo or something going on there. And then some clicks. Same thing, so adding sound. So let's let's do that from scratch. File, new, as before, we're going for the 10, uh, 1280 by 720. And I'm just gonna drop that down again, 75. Bring a few assets in that we're going to put into the library. Um, so let's have a right hand, a left hand, an iPad. Let's bring, oh, and there's an iPad. Let's actually just bring those in. Just bring those in. And I need a background as well. File, import to library. Um, where's my background? So here you go. And I think we went for the this one. So we're going to bring that in. So the first thing I want to look at is how we can change the properties of an image, something that is required. Um, I'm in layer one, which I'm going to rename as background. I'm on frame one, and I'm going to drop that image in. Now it's a little bit big. Again, if we zoom out a little bit more, uh, let's show all. Get it about right. And then I can go to the top corner or one of the corners and just kind of move it down. I keep the width the same. Place it, something like that. Something like that. There we go. Um, I'm just going to use 50 frames and there you go. It's done. Now what we were saying is that it's kind of bright and we want to dull it. We want to make it less bright. You might want to change the properties for any other reason. I'm just going to show you how, how you do this. So first of all, let's go to modify and uh, convert this to a symbol. Um, the symbol is the background. Okay. And if I go to my properties here, I've now got color effects and something you do have to do as part of the part of the, the uh, requirements are to know about how to how to adapt and change images and here, here's one way of doing that in color effects lots of various different options alpha is sort of the the um, uh, opacity the transparency um, of it but I'm just going to go to brightness and I can make it a brighter document and I'm just going to dull it down I can still see it I can still see it's a child's bedroom but I just dulling it down so that it doesn't compete with the foreground. So there we go. Now, if I get to the final frame, it's going to click back out. I shouldn't have done that. I'm going to remove that frame and then add it back in because um, I should have done that once I dulled the image. So the, the workflow there would be to bring the image in, make it into a symbol, and then, um, then you can kind of take control of it. Let's now add in um, let's go back to my library and grab the iPad that we were going to bring in, which probably needs to be a bit bigger. So I'm holding shift down, probably too big. Let's just do that again. And again, I put that on the second layer. So let's just put iPad, whoops, iPad. So, so in, in, in this layer, I, I think, um, I would probably have the right hand. I could probably put that in the same layer let's bring that in because my hand uh, would be behind the iPad so if you've got this situation where it's in front you can um, go to arrange just like something like PowerPoint send it to the back uh, and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just use a tween to start off screen so that's where my I, let's just change our iPad hand so we know it's, it's all in one. Um, I could do it in two layers, but I'm going to do it in one. And then um, that's going to slide up to about, I don't know, about, that'll take about a second. So maybe about 20 frames, something like that. So I'll put in a uh, another keyframe, bring that into position maybe here or somewhere. So it looks like the hand is bringing it up. That can be a... Whoops, that can be a motion tween, a classic tween rather. It's all classic tweens, let's do that. So it starts there and it comes up to here. So as soon as this scene starts, this comes into view. And then we are going to add, let's add 
uh, a clicky hand. So this will be the left hand. Left. That's right, the left hand. Um, and again, I've got my left hand here. It's a PNG. I'm going to bring that in off stage. I'm going to keep that off stage. Um, I'm going to convert that to a symbol. So let's call that left hand. It's a graphic symbol. So let's just see that this comes in and about here, and I think it probably needs to be bigger, doesn't it? Let's just make it a bit bigger. So about here, I'm going to start moving the left hand. So let's add another keyframe. And at that point, the left hand can start to move as well and get to about here. And we probably want it there. It also needs to twist a little bit. So this is quite a good thing to know, is if I go to the very corner uh, of my left hand and just outside of that corner, I get this sort of almost this semicircular thing. It means I can kind of shift and it's going to go to there, isn't it? Because it's going to click on that button. So it's going to come up and then my hand is going to come slowly come over and click on that button. And we'll add a sound and then that's all we'll do in this little piece. So here we go. Um, we want to create a classic tween. So again, hand's going to come over. Now at this point, this is where I'm going to mix. Um, I'm going to mix tweening with a very, very quick uh, frame by frame piece. So I'm just going to add another frame there. So the tween has ended and then I want him to do a click. And I'm just going to put two of these in. But this one, I'm just going to do something like and just make it like, but this is sort of cheating, but so it's like I clicked on it. It just, can you see it? Just like, junk, like that. At which point I want it to click. I want to hear a click. So this is the first time we're adding audio. There'll be other things that will happen af after this. So, you know, after this in the actual video, you, the, this writing would go and the, the other thing would happen here. But let's add one more layer because everything I do with audio, let's just call it, let's call it audio click in case I have an audio background music or something like that. So my audio click basically needs a keyframe and it's going to be probably about here. Uh, I say probably because that's where the visuals click, but let's just see what happens. I recorded some clicks. I just clicked an old mouse, a really nasty old mouse that I had um, and recorded it on my phone. So I'm adding a keyframe. Same as pictures I need to bring it in. I'm going to go file import to library and find my, I think I put everything in a audio file. So here we go. Uh, kids sound. Let's see what we've got in there. Yeah. Click. There's the click. It says it's in the voiceover. It's not, but there it is. Click. It's a wave file. So that has come in. You can see that is here. And all, I, all I'm going to do there is drag that onto my stage. Now, yeah, I was right because the actual recording starts before the click. So all I'm going to do is drag those frames a couple to the left. And then my click is more or less that I'm assuming it's that orange spike there. But I can't hear it. So let's just go and click where my audio is and look at the properties just to check this. So I've got the click. Um, I don't really want any effects, but there are effects that you can add if, if, if you choose it. Uh, it says event. It needs to be stream. All your all, all your audio needs to be streaming. That's all. You, that's the only setting you need to know, because now it clicks and it clicks. It streams on that point. So let's just quickly watch that and see if it works. We should have iPad open, click. There you go. The the actual finger moving is really, you hardly see that, but it still works. It works for the eye and the ear. There we go. So that's pretty good. Let me just show you one thing about audio, which you could do is that let's have a, I just add a audio, um, audio. I'm going to add some music just again, just to show you this. Um, so, I've named my layer audio music. Okay. 
because uh, I can't have any spaces. It keeps telling me that and I keep forgetting. So I'm going to my audio music and I'm going to go there. I'm going to import, same as before with the audio, same as everything. Import to the library. Um, I have already downloaded this track from Ben Sounds, which I like. It's in the library. There it is. And again, it's going into there. I'm going to drag it into there. And now I can see that waveform shows me that there's some music there. So hopefully it's streamed. I'm just going to check that in the properties. Uh, the audio file stream. That's the bit there that we want. So when I scrub through, scrub through now, let's just play it and see what happens. Yeah, it's it's uh because it's got such a heavy beat, I actually lose the click. You can see that the beat kicks in here on the click. So I slightly lost it, but you get the idea. I can add audio, um, I can add some tweens, and that is uh, all I need.